Hey friends, welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. Today we're taking a look at this knife. This is the CH3007-G10, which makes me think maybe they've got a titanium version of this knife. Uh, to be honest with you, I haven't even looked it up yet. I've just been looking at this knife and uh, finding the pros and the cons about this thing. It's got a D2 blade. Some CH knives have been tested by a third party in the United States and uh, the steels are what they claim to be. So we've got a narrow, thin, you know, not so much a slicer style blade, but more of a puncture style blade. If you're interested in a knife like this, it comes in this black with a small orange backspacer or bright blue with a small orange backspacer. If you're not yet a subscriber, consider subscribing. I would appreciate that very much. And thanks for hitting the like or the unlike, whichever way you feel by the time you've finished uh, watching as much of this video as you want to watch. For now, sit down, relax. We've got one commercial break coming, and that's it. The rest is all me talking about this knife. Keep watching. I interrupt your regularly scheduled programming with this announcement. The winners of the 10,000 subscriber giveaway that I did, the celebration, I posted a uh, picture uh, that showed the screenshots of the winners that I drew uh, randomly using TubeBuddy's Pick a Winner tool. Uh, if you're a subscriber to the channel but you didn't click on the notifications, you weren't notified of it. Those of you who have notifications turned on would have been notified of it. You can find it by going to my community page. I've got a link down below. Uh, if you just click on the icon for my channel, go to my main channel page and look across and click on the word community, you'll see the posts that I have. I am, every once in a while, just posting a picture with some content. Uh, at times when I don't have time to make a video, uh, maybe I'm quite sick for a few days or something, or just times when I want to post something, maybe I notice a sale or something, that is not worthy of making a whole separate video about. I just post it that way. So if you've not yet clicked on that bell to get the notifications, maybe consider doing that. Back to our regularly scheduled programs. So here it is. One of the first things I noticed that I like about this knife is I like a stone wash finish on the bevel. Well, all over for that matter, but this knife actually looks quite nice with the Stone wash on the bevel, stone wash on the swedge, and then the flat has got a nice satin horizontal uh, sanding on it. Looks pretty good. We've got jimping on the uh, spine of the blade here by the uh, pivot. Not too aggressive. It's functional, a little bit useful. This knife was dirtier when I got it. So actually, before I get further into this, let's take a look at this knife taken apart because I recorded that about half an hour ago. So here we go. It was quite easy to take apart despite the fact that it is a just a free spinning pivot pin. But you can see inside here that this is, you know, a little bit dirty. Let's see if we can get a good shot there. Yeah, not the greatest. Uh, we do have steel ball bearings in a bronze cage, which I prefer. Might be brass. And uh, yeah, it's okay. We've got T8 screw here. And this side, it's fairly, whoa, focus. On this side, it's fairly clean. But uh, this one, this one's quite dirty. I had one commenter a uh, number of videos back, I don't know, about four or five months ago. Um, I had had a particularly rough day. That was back when my health was still in really bad shape. And he said a comment about um, brushing. <laughs> and I thought he was saying, I need to brush my teeth. I thought he was insulting me. And I totally misunderstood what he said. He meant brush the jimping with a toothbrush. 
because he mentioned, you know, I need a brush with a toothbrush. And uh, he meant to clean this up here. Now, I totally agree. A toothbrush is a really good thing to clean areas like jimping and, uh, you know, areas like that, the milled out screws. Works quite well. But I need to, um, I follow my standards for my reviews. I review what I get. And so if a knife comes to me like this, that's what I do on my video. I show you how it comes because I want you guys to know, you know, what to expect. I'm not going to make the knife all nice, clean and pristine. I'm not going to lubricate it to make the action smoother than it is out of the box. None of those things. I want you to see what the out of the box knife is like. And so I review it out of the box. But Sometimes I just get tired of dirty mess. Now I've reviewed a few uh, CH knives and it seems to me on average they're not as well made in terms of the care on the fit and finish is not as nice as many other Chinese brands. The quality of it, yeah, it's okay because, you know, you can get it at a fairly low price. Here you can really see how small that backspacer is, by the way. All right, I'll put it back together and we'll keep on going in the video. Okay, so this knife did come fairly dirty inside and out. I've cleaned it up, you know, just uh, some soapy water and an old toothbrush and, you know, nicely clean now inside as well. But everything else about this knife is still original. Uh, let's do a size comparison with the Ontario Rat 1. There we go. Maybe straight across, a little bit off screen on some of them, but that's okay on some part of it. Very similar in size. This is a smaller knife. It's certainly more narrow, the depth of it, uh, but the width of it, it's fairly similar. It's a little thinner this way than the Ontario Rat one. The blade stock, very similar actually. The blade again. You know, we've got a spine that's got a slight drop to it, so it's a drop point blade. The swedge makes it look like it's thinner and then goes thicker again, but no, it's the full thickness all the way up to here, and then it starts narrowing down. That means that the tip end of this knife is fairly robust. You might break the very tip off it, but uh, it's got a nice strong tip, uh, very durable for puncturing if that's what you want to do. Uh, we've got a slight belly and then a fairly long straight section right there. Comes into a sharpener's choil that's done very well. I like the size of it. Noticing the writing on the knife, it's got D2 on the uh, blade right there, right on the uh, plunge area. And on the other side, we've got the CH Knives logo and the model number, the CH3007-G10. I like that those aren't very big. They're not in your face. They're not super dark. So yeah, CH knives, it's okay. I prefer all of those things up on the flats instead of on the uh, bevel, but not a big deal. The flipper has got some jimping on it. Not great jimping, but not terrible either. You can do light switch method to deploy the blade. That's good. I like that the flipper tab's not super huge. You can also push down on about a 45 degree angle and deploy the blade as well. If you deploy the blade just lightly, let's talk about the lockup. You know, it looks like lockup is okay. It's a little bit deeper than I prefer it to be, but not terrible. But if you open it hard, you get that. And lockup is late, way late. It's almost touching this other side, and I don't like that. And it usually gets some blade, uh, some lock stick when that happens. Yep, a little bit, not much. But uh, if you just open it up gently, it looks like lockup is great, but it's not. It's late. And that's quite unfortunate because there's not much that you can do with very late lockup. So, lockup. That's not so good, but blade play, 
no, there wasn't any blade play when I got it. It's very, very slight when I uh, set it up to be optimal and very smooth action. Then there's very slight blade play. We've got a pivot pin that's free spinning, like we saw. Not the greatest that way, but it's okay. And nice ball bearing, so that's kind of good. The lock up here, there's a very, very slight chamfering on the uh, lock arm there, but uh, it sticks out enough that way so that uh, it's easy to get your thumb onto the lock arm to disengage the lock. So that's good. Nope, now it's coming back over further every time. Oh well, it's, I'm sure it's just going to get worse and worse quite quickly. I've not opened this knife more than about 50 times yet since I got it. Uh, I did open it up and do a bunch of testing. Some hard cutting didn't cut all that well because of how poorly the sharpening job is done. So there's a few things that are not so good at, but dirty, not very good sharpening, late lockup, tiny bit of blade play side to side. And what else is a tiny bit negative? Look how small that hole is. That paracord, you're not going to fit 550 paracord through there. You might not even fit it through there if you take out the uh, center of it and just use the case. But I do have 550 paracord that will work. I've got some of this. This is, uh, I think, 100 paracord. That's 100 pounds. It's got, I think, three small strands in there. And it just fits in there. So, yeah. Did you know that that kind of paracord is available? Yeah, there's lots of different paracord. You can get, you know, 550 paracord's got seven strands. You can get it with 11 strands, nine strands, five strands, whatever you want. So, yeah, that hole's a little small, and it wasn't chamfered at all. Uh, so the finger, you know, the skin catches on it when you rub over it. That's not too hard to fix either. But you can't make that hole any bigger unless you want to drill the steel liners bigger. And then you're going to get into the way of these two screws because they're so close together. I think the lanyard hole was an afterthought. I think uh, originally it went through the factory and got made. And, uh, you know, after they approved the design, somebody realized there's no lanyard hole. There's no lanyard hole. Uh, so they put in a little lanyard hole. Eh, that's okay. What else about this knife? Well, we've got uh, no skeletonizing in there. Balance point is right there. So they could have skeletonized it a little bit and brought the balance point up to about here. That would have been nice. It's not heavy the way it is, but that would have been nice. I like that we've got 3D milled G10. We've got you know, two little lines milled into it. That does help with the grip a little bit. It's nice to the touch. Uh, the edges, they could use a little bit more chamfering. That's easily done with some sandpaper, just some 220 sandpaper, whatever, just to round it off a little bit. That'd be a little bit nicer. They've got button screws that are sunk in. Yeah, I don't prefer that, but it's not terrible. The G10 backspacer, it's pretty much flush with the liners, so that's well made. I like that. It's a decent knife, but it's not a great knife. How much does this thing cost? We'll talk about that before we do the other part. Uh, AliExpress has got this thing for $34.90, the US. Um, I got it from White Mountain Knives, $39.99 US, but you save 10% with coupon code CCE. And that makes it $35.99 US. That's more reasonable. Um, the equivalent of that is about $46 Canadian, about uh, 29 euros, uh, about 26 British pounds as of you know the end of December 2020. And those numbers always change because the currency values keep changing. It's a decent knife. Not great, but it's okay. If you're still interested, Let's go over all the measurements and that kind of thing. And we'll have this on the screen while I do that. The weight of this knife is 101 grams, 3.6 ounces. The sharpness from the factory, I got 215. 200 and less is considered sharp. So yeah, not so very sharp. And 
Yeah, when I was cutting through cardboard and stuff. Yeah, not so great. The length of the cutting edge, 9.28 centimeters, 3.654 inches. The blade length tipped to the closest spot on the handle, 9.36 centimeters, 3.685 inches. The blade thickness, 3.08 millimeters. That's 0.1215 inches, just under an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, and I measured about an inch up from the sharpener's choil, 2.04 centimeters, 0 0.803 of an inch. The thickness behind the grind at that same spot, The grind angle, again, part of the problem, 23.9 degrees at that one inch point, and then, you know, worse up here, less up here. The other side, 26.3 degrees, and a little bit better at the belly, also a little bit worse right there. So, yeah, not great. Handle now, the handle length, that is 11.61 centimeters, 4.571 inches. The grip area, it's about 10 centimeters, about 4 inches. It's hard to measure that exactly. The handle thickness is slightly rounded, not counting the pocket clip. 1.28 centimeters, that's 0 0.504 of an inch, so just under half, just over half an inch. Not bad. The handle depth, it's biggest right about here, 2.06 centimeters, 0 0.811 inches. Closed. The uh, depth is 2.32 centimeters, 0.914 inches. And the blade length from tip to tail, 20.98 centimeters, two, eight, sorry, 8.26 inches. So just over eight and a quarter inches long. Not bad for what you get. Good proportions, you know, good uh, ratio between the handle and the blade. I've not talked yet much about the uh, pocket clip. I don't actually mind that it's not a deep carry pocket clip. This pocket clip, uh, I thought it was going to get a little hot in the hand because it ends with the uh, tip going up a little bit right there. But no, not hot in the hand at all. So yeah, the pocket clip's not that bad at all. Let's uh, put this thing into a pocket and see. All right, here we go. Bring the pocket underneath there. With that lip on there, it wants to climb over, and you just push, and it comes in right to the bottom. Not that bad. There's not a lot sticking out there, but it is orange. That is going to grab some attention, especially if you buy the blue knife, the blue handle. But I like this. We've got grip here. When you want to take the knife out of your pocket, it's got good grip for your thumb to grab on there and pull it out. Sometimes the ultra deep carry pocket clips mean that yeah, you know, it's a little bit harder to pull the knife out of your pocket. This thing's got good retention. It holds on well. Not bad. I do wish it was left and right-handed pocket clip. It wouldn't have harmed the design very much. You'd have just a little bit of a mark right there. So, oh well, they didn't get that. Is this knife worth buying? Well, I've bought other... Uh, CH knives and you know I've liked them fairly well. They've not had the problems that this one has uh, with that late lockup. That is the big thing. If you got one that has that same late lockup, oh by the way the alignment is just a slight bit off. It doesn't touch on the side here but uh, it's not got a lot of room to move in there so it's fairly good. Uh, but that late lockup you know, if you just open it up gently, not so bad. No, that time I did gently, and it's about halfway across. It just, whoa, hit that table. It's just not good when you flip it open and it's that late. So I'm not that fond of it. I've got a new product for lock stick, and so I'll make a video about lock stick before too long. So there you go. I thank you very much for watching my video. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you want to become a Patreon supporter for this month, uh, do that very soon. It does make a big difference. I am trying to save up money for a proper camera. Uh, and if you want to help me out on that, I very much appreciate it. I've got a special fundraiser going on on PayPal uh, for a way that you can support me. 
to get that camera. I will be paying at least half the cost myself out of my own budget, but I'm asking for other people to help out a little bit. If you don't have PayPal and you're in Canada, you can do an e-transfer to me. Just email me first at CanadianCuttingEdge at gmail.com and uh, I'll tell you how you can do that. So, yeah, decent, nothing special. It's got some issues. It's not great. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye for now.